In this video, we shall explore various options for the implementation of event handlers. We shall use the example of attaching an action listener to a menu item. In the process, we shall introduce Java's nested class feature and the anonymous in a class variation of this. For this exploration, we shall use a version of the image of your project that's midway between version 0.1 and 0.2. We called this version 0.15. This version has a J-frame that displays a label and has a small menu. Our task will be to make the quit menu item close the application. The task involves attaching an event handler to the quit menu item. When using the Swing library, we often use the action listener interface from the java.awt.event package for event handlers. An object from a class implementing the action listener interface is attached to a GUI object that will generate events. Then each time an event occurs, such as a button press or a menu selection, any attached action listeners are notified. The action listener interface is simple. It has a single method, action performed, and that method receives an action event parameter with details of the event that just occurred. We shall start the first of several implementations along the lines that can be found in version 0.2 of the Image Viewer project. In this approach, the Image Viewer will be the event handler for all the GUI events. Therefore, it must implement the action listener interface. We import everything from the java.awt.event package. Then add implements action listener to the class header. And providing an implementation of the action performed method. Now we must attach the image viewer object as the event handler for the menu items. We'll add it to both menu items to show that the same method will be called for both. Notice that we use this as a way for the image viewer object to pass a reference to itself to the menu item. The menu item will then use that reference to call the action performed method to signal that an event has occurred. Now we can try out this version. We can see that the open and quit menu items are making a call back to the image viewer when they're selected. So it should now be straightforward to actually call the quit method to close the program. However, we have a problem because the same event handler is being used for both menus. It always closes the program regardless of which menu is selected. We clearly need some way to distinguish an event on one menu item from an event on another. Fortunately, there's an easy way to do this. The action event object passed into the action performed method returns the label of the menu that was selected from its get action command method. So we can look at that to work out what action is required. Clearly, as more menu items are added to the GUI, more selection tests would be added to the action performed method. The technique we've illustrated here is called centralized receipt of events. By making a single method of image viewer responsible for dealing with every event, we could easily end up with a very large and clumsy piece of code. This has arisen primarily because we have no direct connection between the object generating an event and the code to implement the associated action. Everything is handled by a single image viewer object. Because this approach is unwieldy, a different approach is often preferred. In this, separate objects are made responsible for handling the different events that arise. Each event generating object is given a dedicated event handler object that handles the event from just that event object. By doing things that way, 
an event handler never has to work out where an event came from because it's only listing for events from a single event object. We shall explore this approach through three different stages that ultimately lead us to the most common approach to event handling in Swing GUIs. In this version, we've created a separate class to take responsibility for handling events from the Quit menu. We've only included functionality for Quit, but other menu items could be dealt with in an identical manner. A Quit Listener object is added to the Quit menu item. The Quit Listener class implements the Action Listener interface. A reference to the image viewer is passed to its constructor for the callback. The action performed method of quit listener calls the image viewer's quit method. Of course, we could have just embedded a call to system.exit in the action performed method, but in general it's the image viewer that's going to include the functionality invoked by these events, so we've followed that pattern here. There are several negative features of this particular solution. Firstly, one of the changes we had to make to image viewer to allow this version to compile was to make the quit method visible outside the class. Previously it had been private, so there's been a loss of encapsulation. This will be modified as further external listener classes are created. Secondly, as we noted above, the actions we want to take when an event occurs are inside the image viewer, whereas an object completely outside the image viewer is the one receiving the event. This means that the handler then has to call back to the image viewer to get the job done. Thirdly, the quit listener class is rather artificial. It's a class that will only have a single instance, and it has no general usefulness. There are unlikely to be any opportunities for reuse, and no other classes in the project will need to interact with it. All of these negative features highlight the very tight coupling that exists between the image viewer class and its subordinate listener classes. Fortunately, Java provides a way to deal with most of these issues. In Java, it's possible to nest classes. In other words, one class may be defined inside another. Such classes are called nested or inner classes. So for our next version of the project, we shall define quit nester inside the image for a class. No change is required to the way in which the quit listener is attached to the action listener of the quit menu item. The source of the quit listener class is at the end of the image viewer class, just before the closing curly bracket. The position may be anywhere, but we tend to place nested classes at the end of their enclosing class. Notice that the nested class has been declared as private. We've not seen a private class before, but this makes it clear that quit listener exists purely for the benefit of its enclosing class and it cannot be accessed from outside it. Otherwise, there's no change from the previous version. While this version works, it does not take full advantage of what is possible with nested classes. Recall that everything inside a class definition is accessible by every other part of the class definition. Methods can access the fields and can call other methods. Exactly the same principle applies between a nested class and its enclosing class. The fields and methods of the enclosing class are directly accessible from within the nested class. That means that the action performed method doesn't actually need to access the quit method via the viewer variable. It can be called directly. Since the viewer field was only in the quit listener class for the callback, it follows that the viewer field is not needed at all, and therefore the image viewer does not need to pass itself to the constructor of quit listener. So in this version, we've stripped down the quit listener to its minimum requirements. We've even removed its constructor, since there are no longer any fields to initialize. In effect, the class consists of just the implementation of the action performed method. That method then calls the quit method from its enclosing class. Notice too that the quit method is private once again, because it's directly accessible from the nested class. So this version addresses most of the criticisms we had of the one where quit listener existed independently of image viewer. However, there's one final change we shall make. This is to address the fact that having a class of this nature for a single instance is rather artificial. There is just one place where a quit listener object is created, where it's attached to the menu item. There are no other references to quit listener in the program. In addition, as we've observed, the class is little more than a wrapper for a simple action performed method. There's one further feature of Java that addresses these issues, 
anonymous inner classes. This feature recognizes that we often do not need a specific name for a class when we create its instances. Where a type name is necessary, polymorphism allows us to refer to it using one of its supertypes. In this particular example, we only really need to know that quit listener is a subtype of action listener. That's the type that the menu items add action listener method uses after all. This final version illustrates the way that this has been done in our project. The quit listener class has been removed completely. What was left of it, the action performed method, has been written directly at the point where the quit listener was being created, in the call to add action listener. The syntax used for anonymous classes is a little tricky to get used to, but it soon becomes familiar because this form is used quite widely. What is unusual about it is that we appear to be creating an instance of an interface type. Action Listener. This is not normally possible because interfaces have no implementation. However, the key is that we're actually supplying the missing implementation where we're creating the instance. That is what the body of the Action Performed method is doing. There's more on this approach in the chapter. In summary, we've discussed two different approaches to event handling centralized receipt of multiple events by a single object or a dedicated object for each individual event. We've seen that the former approach can be cumbersome where there are a large number of events to be dealt with. The latter approach makes for highly cohesive event handling. Java's nested class syntax allows us to keep the event handling code close to where the events are processed, ensuring good encapsulation. While the anonymous inner class syntax is a little tricky to get used to, it's widely used.